Good afternoon, uh, good evening, and good morning, everyone. Thanks so much for uh, joining us today and attending the, the first of uh, hopefully many Ecosystem OS Protolab webinars that we are planning to, to organize. Um, the Ecosystem OS Protolab webinar series are live, free, and virtual presentations uh, that will mainly cover a wide range of topics to build ecosystem intelligence with digital solutions at varying technical levels. Uh, these sessions will be uh, led by ecosystem OS solution architects and engineers, and they will feature technical deep dives, live demonstrations, uh, customers examples and Q&A uh, with ecosystem OS experts. And, and um, we, we really hope that we will be able to basically to inspire and, and educate um, ecosystem builders and, and operators uh, that are looking at digital with great interest to bring more automation, efficiency, and intelligence, um, basically to help learn how ecosystem data should be structured or how to build machine learning models or how to build ecosystem portals and so forth. Uh, also, I think um, it is worth mentioning that, as many of you know, we at the Startup Commons are uh, driven by values such as transparency and openness. So uh, we have shared so much knowledge around innovation and entrepreneurship, and uh, we will continue uh, doing so also on the digital side. And now, thanks to this uh, new webinar series, people uh, will be able to see uh, the digital works uh, that we are developing behind the scenes, so with no filters at all. We will show what we have and you will be, I would say, our fancy spectator of our obstacles and, and progress. So say this, I'm moving now towards the webinar, some, some housekeeping task. So could you please raise your hands to confirm that audio and video are working properly? All right, good. Uh, um, yeah, so we also encourage you to, to use the, the chat and the, and the Q&A feature to start dropping your, your questions, and we will take them at the end of, of the presentation. All right. So then let's get started with uh, the agenda for today. Uh, first of all, for, for those that don't know us yet, so we will have a short introduction about what we do through Ecosystem OS. Then we will continue uh, by briefly describing uh, the road uh, to ecosystem intelligence. Uh, we will then talk about the main components for ecosystem intelligence and the related opportunities. Uh, then we will present a use case to be used as the first step to, to build uh, ecosystem intelligence. We will make a demo of the current prototype we have fit in that use case and then uh, by the end, uh, we will share with all of you other use cases uh, that we are working on. Uh, and then uh, more at, at the end of the presentation, we will also share how you can contribute to this uh, development of the proposed use case, or even how you can start implementing uh, uh, that use case uh, locally in your ecosystem. And, and finally, we will have some minutes for, for Q&A. And today, together with me in this webinar, we have our uh, machine learning engineers, uh, Gavi Sencha and Konstantinos Volodakis. Hi, guys. Good to see you both here. How are you? Hello to everyone. Good to see you. Thank you. Good evening. Good. Good to see you. Great. Okay, so then uh, uh, let's get started with uh, a basic introduction about uh, ecosystem OS. So um, we we at the Startup Commons focus on uh, scaling innovation and entrepreneurship uh, by by working with key ecosystem actors and organizations on empowering and, and enabling to develop startup ecosystems with uh, open knowledge tools and, and resources startup ecosystem development consulting and, and also digital transformation uh, with data infrastructure to connect, measure, and, and monitor startup ecosystems. And specifically on the digital side, uh, we want to position ourselves as uh, solution architects sitting on your 
basically on the customer side of the table to, to help them make decisions about uh, ecosystem strategies, uh, technologies to be implemented uh, to help them select uh, the right local or global providers. Uh, and in general, basically to remove ecosystem fragmentation and, and, and building ecosystem connectivity. And on the implementation side, we, we want to focus on, on building the foundational and uh, transit component uh, of your ecosystem to enable uh, data integration and flows, as well as enabling ongoing connectivity, both uh, locally and, and globally. And uh, when we look at developing solutions for our customers, we really focus on, on building on top of what they have in use, uh, tailored to their needs and incrementally improve and, and, and always building with common assets while also maintaining independence and, and ownership of their solution and future de uh, developments. And uh, due to the extensive experience working uh, in the innovation entrepreneurship field for so many years, so we have validated also that uh, building ecosystem connectivity requires holistic view and, and understanding as well as end-to-end -end solutions that require to work and build solutions at different levels. And, and just like you can build a toy castle out of various Lego pieces, we want you to build uh, ecosystem interoperability out of a set of building blocks ready to be basically plugged into. So this is ecosystem OS. It is actually uh, a combination of uh, programming languages, frameworks, uh, libraries, uh, UX, UI solutions, software components and tools, all of them are working together basically to develop ecosystem interoperability. And what are those uh, building blocks? So, uh, so the main building blocks to develop ecosystem interoperability are uh, starting with, for example, open standard uh, data models to basically to provide uh, common understanding and documentation of, of data elements and, and requirements uh, to also provide foundation for designing uh, databases and APIs uh, to basically to also help avoid uh, data redundancy and, and build data consistency. Uh, the open standard data models also facilitate data uh, reuse and sharing and therefore decreasing development and maintenance time and cost. And in general, uh, enables to build new unbundle or redevelop existing applications based on, on common data model. Then we have uh, the, the UI design components, which are a set of uh, ready-made Figma UI design components, such as you know buttons or inputs or dialogues and so on. It should serve as, as building blocks and demos for layouts for building rich and interactive UIs and, and in general to accelerate the development and to basically to make it uh, accessible and compatible and I would say easy to use. Uh, and actually I can share here uh, another component uh, building block uh, which is um, basically uh, let me share the screenshot with you. Um, where is it here? So we also have um, So we also have uh, uh, here React components, so those are uh, um, dynamic components, uh, basically to, to showcase how those uh, UI Figma components works in, in practice. So for example, here we have uh, the, uh, how the startup development phases component works. Uh, for example, uh, we have here from minus two, 
um, it doesn't work here. Okay, so here we can reflect uh, the start of the melon phases from minus two to one. Or for example, uh, we can also uh, look at how an event listing component looks like. So basically we have here like the functionality to uh, to basically to expand information about the startup event. And then we can also showcase that is uh, responsive. So meaning that information is also adjusted here. So these are basically dynamic components that can give you an idea about uh, the, the kind of uh, UI components that we are building and how they, they, they will work in, in, in practice. And then coming back to the uh, representation, okay. So then we also have, as another building block, we have uh, data hub APIs basically to provide endpoints to enable uh, interpretability with other applications and basically to, to create exchange and consume data and basically uh, letting you to connect your application to single API endpoint to, to connect with multiple other applications locally and globally and also giving you the 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 big opportunity to remove your cost for API documentation and, and maintenance. Then we also have uh, ecosystem user accounts for individuals and, and teams. So basically, through that, uh, we make users data becomes uh, standardized and compatible and portable between apps and services. Uh, these ecosystem user accounts enable also interactions and real time data synchronization with uh, multiple services and, and and also gives the the i mean general data is basically owned and uncontrolled by the rightful owners and then we also have the machine learning algorithms so basically we are trying to combine our uh, ecosystem development expertise with um, machine learning models and we are looking at building and training machine learning models to uh, common use cases. So basically, so you can deploy that into your local ecosystem based on your local uh, data and effectively basically generate more, more matching and, and ultimately providing answers and, and new information you currently don't have or that is, uh, I would say, costly to produce. So here's a, an example of how those components look uh, for one specific uh, use case related to uh, the startup events aggregation. So first of all, um, we, we have a data model with different entity types, uh, attributes, uh, relationships, and so on uh, to essentially communicate a model for what data and how it is stored and, and used. Uh, then we have uh, the GraphQL uh, schema related to the previous uh, data model that basically uh, defines what type of data can be read and written to our uh, data model. Then uh, we have the, the UI components, which are the parts we use to uh, basically to build the applications and providing uh, the touch points with the users like you know, the, the buttons, the scroll bars, then menu items and checkboxes. And, and basically defining different views like this uh, listing view, or uh, as we saw earlier, like more detailed view or, or mobile view. So in summary, uh, we have different building blocks at different levels that when they are used together, Basically, they provide standardized data for ecosystem actors. Uh, they provide or basically make data techni technically accessible for, for anyone by rules defined by the rightful owners of data in question and, and definitely being uh, a progressive solution allowing you to build on top of uh, what is uh, already in use and scaling with your connectedness needs from nothing to locally and even globally connected. 
So this is how, how basically we think ecosystem interoperability, interoperability should be built as a mean to, uh, to provide uh, more automation, to provide more efficiency, and ultimately to provide ecosystem intelligence. But uh, getting there is not uh, an easy journey. Uh, for us, uh, ecosystem intelligence is uh, like an ongoing process of uh, transforming related ecosystem data into, for, into information, and then information into knowledge, and knowledge into intelligence to enable uh, more effective strategic, tactical, and operational insights and decision making. Uh, to support innovation and entrepreneurship. And we have uh, identified here five levels that are needed for, for ecosystem intelligence. So and the first step towards building ecosystem intelligence is basically a, a written statement by, made by uh, a wide uh, representation of ecosystem actors uh, declaring publicly the intentions and views towards building that intelligence, defining and, and providing a roadmap uh, for turning data into, uh, into a key asset and, and, and a true commitment basically for a better cooperation between all stakeholders, both public and private. Then on the second level, we have uh, common terminology, which basically provides a foundation for interoperability by uh, improving uh, the effectiveness of information exchange. And as you can imagine, it is key to, to define concepts in, in a, a clear way between a sender and a receiver of, of information. Then uh, on level three, we have uh, the ecosystem operator, a dedicated uh, neutral entity, which uh, or with the mandate from all ecosystem actors with proper resourcing and long term approach, uh, looking at the needs of all sites and representing uh, all the key segments at ecosystem level and focus on uh, enabling orchestration and starting fixing um, this connectivity challenge and to, to really become uh, a neutral custodian of common ecosystem infrastructure and a hub for common information and data sharing uh, with sole focus uh, for eliminating uh, friction from the entrepreneur experience and as a result, improving the entire ecosystem performance as a whole. And then on, on level four, uh, we have uh, data distribution. It is uh, uh, the level when ecosystem as a whole is able to, to answer also the question, uh, what is happening? And it takes current, uh, often real-time information and describes and summarizes basically to help you visualize the state of your ecosystem at a given point in time. And, and, and finally, uh, the highest level is intelligence, where uh, data and analysis is a central ecosystem strategy. And I would say that in general, there's a, a general trust in received data and all the information is used to generate uh, maximum potential, like for example, increasing the quality of businesses, increasing uh, volume of exits or, uh, or improving the company survival rates or improving the velocity of startups to move between the startup phases, etc. So at this level, uh, ecosystems uh, answer the question, why did it happen? Understanding basically what factors are likely contributing to a particular outcome. It also answers uh, the question like, what is happening now, providing uh, real-time KPIs to help ecosystem operators uh, keep an eye on important ecosystem objectives in real time. And, and then uh, as long as the capacity of the ecosystem to collect and, and analyze data grows, and the ecosystem uh, will have more capacity to forecast and answer the questions like, okay, based on uh, historical data, what might happen? Um, helping basically ecosystem operators estimate the direction of future trends by comparing uh, current against 
historical performance patterns. And then uh, based on this uh, to implement uh, predictive, uh, predictive models to, to answer questions like, okay, based on, on, on what happened, what is likely to, to happen and, and ultimately to provide um, prescriptive analytics uh, to basically to anticipate and answer questions like what will happen, when will it happen or why will it happen. So, so therefore the main, uh, uh, main building blocks uh, to develop ecosystem intelligence are basically uh, data analytics and, and machine learning. So ecosystem data is, is, is fully scattered amongst uh, many ecosystem actors, platforms and applications and ecosystem operators should have, I would say the tools in place to capitalize it on it. And then uh, with machine learning models, uh, you will be providing ecosystems with the ability to learn from data and improve over time without uh, being explicitly programmed and even reach the point where you don't have to, uh, to tell the system what you are looking for. It figures out uh, on its own based on historical data profiles, et cetera. It, I would say that uh, yeah, it, may say, it may sound like uh, science fiction, um, but this is the world we all are living in. So different, different kinds of intelligence are now uh, virtually everywhere in our lives. Uh, we have used uh, uh, Google today to search the internet, right? Uh, and that's intelligence and you are, benefit, you are benefiting from, from it. Uh, another example is that there has been thousands of transactions with credit cards today and that's intelligence also and you are also benefiting from artificial intelligence programs uh, that validate users' identities and stop potentially fraudulent transactions. Uh, you have, for example, visited online stores and, and make uh, personalized suggestions based on the products that you are looking for, right? And, and that's intelligence working for you. So the same approach uh, can be can be fully applied for innovation entrepreneurship ecosystem development, uh, bringing uh, more ecosystem automation, more analytics and more predictions. But like, like I would say anything, um, like anything starting from, from the scratch. So it's, it's important basically to, 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 to take things step by step um, 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 and basically uh, here we are today showcasing what we are going to do uh, basically to build ecosystem intelligence by applying uh, machine learning models for one uh, simple use case. Automated startup development phases labeling for startup events. So this is the, the problem we have validated globally. So in the, uh, in the whole entrepreneurial landscape, the, the, the world is full of events catering for entrepreneurs and startups for networking and knowledge building. Uh, all these events are usually scattered through different platforms and, and communicate different aspects of, uh, related to the event, like the title, uh, descriptions, schedules, venue, etc. Uh, but however, and, and quite often, and there is, there is a, a mismatch between uh, the audience and the event content leading to uh, wrong expectations and therefore bad user experience. So content too basic or content too advanced and or uh, not finding the right person to meet with are usually the most common outcomes. And in our work uh, to, to to help improve the event audience matching effectiveness. Um, basically, we have defined some challenges from uh, different points of view. So from, from a startup event organizers, it's important to understand how we can help startup event organizers to attract uh, the right audience or how we can uh, help startup events organizers to coordinate better with other existing organizers. Uh, or from entrepreneurs, startups, mentors, or investors, or other stakeholders point of view, 
So basically how we can help them to find the events fit in the phase where they are. So startup development phases by, by Startup Commons is a, a globally recognized and adopted framework that describes uh, the different stages of a startup journey, but also helps to label any ecosystem item for more uh, effective matchmaking. So like, for example, individuals with companies or entrepreneurs with services or entrepreneurs with mentors, uh, startups with investors, etc. And currently, a manual uh, labeling of startup events according to uh, the startup development phases is, a, I would say, a common practice. However, it's, it's I would say, it's time consuming and error prone because of the manual factor. And basically, in order to address these challenges, uh, we want to design, uh, develop, and, and test uh, prototypes for automatic system event classification and prediction based on the current event information available in the different event management systems and startup development phases and, and, and employing basically machine learning techniques uh, to, to do that. From a more visual and practical point of view, if this is how a startup event uh, listing view looks like without labeling, then this is the expected outcome um, we are trying to achieve. So basically you can see here the different uh, labels uh, according to the startup development phases, uh, indicating basically to what stages uh, the event is catering for. All right, so now my colleagues, uh, Constantinos and Gabi will tell you more about how we are implementing this from a more uh, technical perspective. So guys, the floor is yours now. Okay, uh, thank you, uh, Oscar. Okay. I will stop sharing now. Okay. Yeah, so uh, like uh, Oscar, like I said, we are trying to build a machine learning model to help startup event uh, organizers uh, label their events for, uh, label their events so that they can solve the problem of, of mismatch audience, which uh, Oscar already explained to us. So in this model, what we are trying to do is we want to get in a set of inputs, which could be the title of the event, the description of the event, and we pass it through a machine learning model, which we are basically going to train, and it should be able to tell us which uh, phase does the event belong to. So uh, these phases are defined according to the startup commons uh, uh, development phases, which is globally accepted. So these are the phase descriptions and next control. Next slide. Uh, Oscar, please can you move to the next slide? Okay. Yeah. Okay, so basically uh, to solve this problem, uh, we proposed uh, two sets of algorithms, which are machine learning based algorithms. So the first one is the k nearest neighbor approach and another one is the deep learning approach. So with the k nearest neighbor approach, we try to compare the description of the events with the description of phases as defined by startup commons, but not limited to this. Uh, we also try to get in some descriptive attributes from already labeled events. So to this regard, we use uh, manual uh, events that have been labeled manually uh, to train our model such that it's able to pick up some keywords or calculate some similarities between uh, the event to be labeled and previous events which it already knows. And another approach, which we are, which is our goal, is to build a deep learning model, uh, like to build a recurrent neural network, which can learn how to predict the 
the face of an event given the event title and description. However, with this approach, we require a lot, a lot of labeled data and which is not currently at our disposal. So we, we first of all start with the basic approach, which is the k nearest number approach, which doesn't require that much amount of data. And we would also like to thank our thank uh, Bow Valley College from Calgary and uh, Startup Foundation from Finland for providing us with some uh, data which we use to train our models to help us uh, predict uh, the faces of events which events belong to. Yeah, and for the next steps, we are going to see a demo of the of uh, the Kenya reasonable mod, uh, model in action. And we will, like uh, Oscar rightly said, this is the first of our demos and we will continue to try improve this model and also implement the deep learning model. And at the end, we will compare the performance of all the models and choose the best model which acts, uh, which, which helps us with our intelligence. That is which predicts the uh, event rightfully. So right now I'll pass it on to my colleague, which is going to help us with the demonstration. Hello from my side as well. Uh, I'm going to share my screen now uh, in order to move on with uh, the demo of uh, our prototype uh, that is already built. Uh, I, I hope that everyone sees my screen right now. Uh, so uh, could I have some hands in order to validate that my screen is like showing up? Okay, great. Uh, so from my side, first of all, uh, thanks Oscar for the introduction and thanks Gabby uh, for helping me out uh, for building this model. Uh, special thanks to our partners, Bo Valley College from um, Calgary and also Startup Foundation from Finland. Uh, the data that uh, we used, uh, that you sent us, helped us a lot building the model. Uh, so we're going to move on with uh, showing you the model, so demo. Uh, at least for now, the model uh, is not uh, completed for sure, in any case. Uh, but uh, as we're going on, we plan to have uh, a series of webinar in order to showcase our improvement of the model. Uh, and of course, uh, we would also like your help uh, in order to participate by sharing data or anything else uh, and also would like uh, to showcase our work in order to improve maybe many more ecosystems than that so um, over here uh, we've got our prediction function uh, that uh, we're gonna run the prediction function asks for uh, the name of the event uh, for the events uh, we're gonna use uh, over here, the Startup Foundation from Finland events. Uh, this is a live page and all the events that you see that are kind of live. Uh, so we're gonna take the title of the event, copy it into our function, and then the function asks us for the description of the event. The description of the event, uh, same way we're copying it and pasting it here. And our model uh, ends up uh, with uh, the result of the event that says that uh, it belongs to two different phases, uh, to eye dating and validating as well. Uh, we all, we can use this uh, this model to uh, any number of events. Uh, also, if we you automate that, it's going to be uh, really beneficial in order to. Uh, don't use manual labor in order to label all the events. Uh, so we're going to move on to our second event for today. Uh, going to rerun our program, our function, and we're going to see that uh, the more uh, descriptive the event is, the description of the event is, uh, the better it is for us in order to validate that this is correct or not. So this event is uh, also uh, fall, belongs to the following phases, scaling and committing, as you can see here. Uh, but we can also uh, use this tactic and this model for events that are 
less uh, descriptive, uh, like uh, this one. As you can see over here, we've got the title, uh, and we've got also the description that it's not so big. Uh, so we can rerun our model again, use the name of the event and the description as always. And we can see that again, our model ends up uh, by guessing uh, the most uh, probable uh, phases that this event belongs to. So this event belongs to four different phases, idating, validating, scaling, and establishing. Uh, again, we can see that uh, uh, on slash, uh, by rerunning our model, again, as you can see here, the description is not so big. Uh, so by rerunning our model, we can see that this event belongs to five phases now, idating, committing, validating, scaling, and establishing. Also, uh, I need you to notice that uh, some events may belong to one phase or some events may belong to multiple phase. And our goal is also to uh, maybe try to uh, uh, guess where the event is going through. Let's say if it's in the phase from validating to scaling, uh, we will try our best in order to try and guess in which phase the scaling phase is, let's say that it's in the one third of scaling. Uh, so that was the, the demonstration of uh, our prototype model. Uh, as mentioned earlier, this is gonna be, uh, with more data, the, the, the model is gonna be improved uh, a lot. Uh, so I'm passing, uh, uh, I'm stop this uh, screen sharing uh, option and I'm passing to you, Oscar, again. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, Constantino. It's really great, really great demo. Um, and do we have information about the, the accuracy of the machine learning model so far? So we can get a sense about in, 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 in which point we are now and, and how we are moving forward? Uh, I think that uh, last time that uh, we ran the demo, uh, we updated the file because we had some uh, manually labeled events today. Uh, so our accuracy improved a little bit more today. Uh, so last time uh, the accuracy was around uh, 35%. Uh, so right now our accuracy is around 36-37% as I remember well. Uh, I've got it in a previous demo, uh, but this is where we are right now and uh, we will be working on in order to improve it even further. Yeah, thank you. Pleasure. Okay, uh, let's continue with the with the presentation now. So yeah, so uh, thanks again, Gabi and Constantino. So uh, basically, you you two are doing like a really great great job, and 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 basically, I'm. I'm looking forward to seeing how how this uh, model evolves uh, with more data and how uh, it will basically improve the the, the accuracy dramatically in, in in that model. So well done, guys. And also, uh, this model makes more sense in the in a global landscape of event aggregation. So, for example, let's consider. Um, an ecosystem A with uh, two local event sites uh, representing, for example, an, an accelerator uh, and a co-working space. And then in that, uh, uh, in, in this ecosystem A, we have a, a local data hub that will aggregate and, and clean up startup events data coming from those sources, providing the right data structure and standardization. And at the same time, uh, that local data hub A uh, will have the ability to, to distribute and promote uh, startup events data to, to any ecosystem actors and where any ecosystem actor will decide uh, what, what the startup events will be notified uh, to, to depending on their own criteria. So this is the, the, the the, the, the initial uh, setup for an ecosystem in which uh, local actors' uh, responsibilities are basically aggregating and 
cleaning up uh, startup events data and distributing and promoting uh, startup events data to anyone within the ecosystem. And the same setup is also applied to, to any ecosystem, BAE, C or X. And then at global level, uh, we have the, a global data hub that in one hand uh, aggregates uh, data coming from different ecosystems, but it also aggregates um, uh, startup events data from global platforms like uh, Facebook, Eventbrite, meetup.com, etc. And this uh, global data hub will have, I would say, the data analytics tools and machine learning models to build intelligence for ecosystems. And basically, uh, ecosystems uh, will be able to, to subscribe to it in order to to stay informed about what ecosystems are connected for uh, global benchmarking, for uh, data exchange between uh, ecosystems and, and in general, uh, to, to get the right answers for your ecosystem challenges through advanced data analytics and machine learning uh, models. So this is what we are building so far. Uh, we already have uh, another use case in the pipeline about uh, finding uh, the right co-founder for your startup, which is, uh, as you probably know, a crucial step in the early phases. Uh, um, um, and picking the wrong co-founder for your company is one of the most common reasons why, why startups fail. And as I said earlier, this is just the, the, the beginning towards building ecosystem interoperability and intelligence and um, more use cases uh, are basically in, are in a standby waiting to be unlocked uh, step by step uh, by the uh, whole ecosystem OS team and also um, simply by, by customers uh, requests. And now for, for the end of the presentation, uh, if, if any of you uh, are interested in contributing to this use case that we are developing, so mainly you, you mainly have two, two, two ways to contribute. So the easiest way is to uh, share uh, the startup events uh, data that you have in your ecosystem. We just need really basic information like event title or description and event dates and time, etc. Uh, but then on the, basically, on, on, as a second option, if you want to basically to commit, um, basically you can start implementing these solutions uh, locally in your uh, ecosystem through an implementation project with us, uh, starting with uh, data modeling and then setting up the ecosystem data hub for your local ecosystem. And finally, to ramp up and hand over to you basically for, for local development. And if you are wondering uh, about the pricing of making this happen, so this is the, the pricing for uh, the startup events aggregation uh, use case. So, so basically uh, we are describing here what you can get by, by implementing that in local, in local context. And, and, and on top of that, of that, uh, project pricing, and then we also, we use uh, as a backend for the solution, we have Grass CMS, and we should basically add this, this monthly cost on top of that uh, project pricing that we already uh, described earlier. So yeah, so this is what we have for today. Uh, I, I really hope that uh, we have covered many many of the things that are relevant for you uh, in, your, in your way to, to uh, start developing this ecosystem in intelligence in your uh, territory, in your city, in your province, in your uh, country. So now uh, we are basically having like some, some minutes for, for Q&A. So I'm happy to take all the, all the questions that we have from here. Okay. So uh, the first question comes from uh, Nahel. Basically, uh, he's asking or she's asking which model are you using to present, uh, basically, to present this ecosystem uh, machine learning model. So uh, 
Gabi, can you can you jump on that? So the model. So can you describe a little bit the, the machine learning model that we are describing? Uh, I guess uh, my next question was about the ecosystem OS, uh, which model are, are, are you using to present the ecosystem OS? Because this, this question was posed while you were doing the presentation about ecosystem OS. Or oh, maybe Nahir, could you maybe rephrase your question so we understand you better? Yeah. Then another question comes from uh, Will Benica. Uh, has the presented KN model being automated and productionalized? If not, was it due to timing or are there other issues? Uh, okay. Uh, Will, thank you for your question. Uh, right here, uh, right now, we haven't uh, put uh, the KN model uh, at the production level. Uh, because we are still working on it, we are still developing, we are still trying to improve on this model. And once it's production ready, you be the, we will have maybe another webinar where we are explaining on how it's going to be used and uh, how it's going to be accessed. So right now we are like still trying to improve on this model. We are still developing it. We are still trying to complete the back end because uh, at the end of it, I think Oscar showed you what uh, what we plan to achieve. And as per the demo you saw, we just have uh, some raw code. We haven't yet added some visual representations or aggregation between the front end and back end. So we are still working on that. Yes, exactly. So, I mean, then the main point with this webinar is to basically to start showcasing what we have and, and, and also, uh later on we will we will create or we will organize more webinars where we we can basically showcase how our machine learning models the developments are progressing and and how uh, it is impacting on on specific solutions that we 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 have uh, so in that sense of course this is that everything that we are presenting today are not ready uh, solutions there's a lot around that to be developed yet uh and, and once they are commercialized of course that we will make you all know about that um yeah so coming back to the first question so the question was which representation model of ecosystem do you use for example do you use mit model for any other model so we basically when we talk about ecosystem we talk about our own understanding about uh what what an ecosystem means um, basically through through the big experience that we have uh, we we have a deep understanding about the different uh, ecosystem actors that are part of, of an ecosystem the kind of uh, interactions and dynamics uh, amongst them and and also the kind of best practices and services and processes that are needed towards supporting startups in their different phases so this is something that we have been accumulating for for many years working with more than 30 ecosystems all around the world at different levels and as a result of that uh, deep deep learning and knowledge about this we are basically implementing these digital solutions uh, to bring more efficiency to that work okay so um do we have any more questions? Yeah, we have one question yes, again from Will Benica. He's asking in regards to the model, uh, if we are returning the confidence level for our predictions. And right now we are not returning it. And I, Mr. Oscar, please, can you share your screen again about the final end product for the events leveling? Uh, yeah. So that I can, I can explain. Here? Yeah, no, uh, go 
previous the previous slide. Which one? Back back again. Yeah, keep on keep on going backwards. This one? Uh, no, previous no. Pre the previous this slides. One. No, previous no, no, to your slides. It's 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 on your slides. The slides you explain. What? Which one? About the end product of the uh, events. Like ah, okay, this one. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so uh, we we'll, so yeah so basically like Oscar said we are trying to end up with something like this actually right here it's uh, we only have like solid blue fields for for example the one and two uh, events belonging to phase one and phase two uh, but uh, in the in in our in our model we are trying to like have maybe uh, one point three. Uh, 0 0.8 yeah which shows some uh, level of confidence that this event belongs to this particular phase to some extent so maybe an event would not be like fully belonging to a particular phase uh, and this is going to be denoted in in uh, in our end in our end solution and I don't know if uh, Oscar you could show you could show a demo of this uh, in the React component for the startup development phases. Yes. Yeah. Uh, let me also coming back to the React components that we we, we had. Um, yeah. Screen. Yes. Yes. So yes, in the React components we have here, like the, the startup development phases component that we are using to basically to, to label the startup events. And here we can basically define, for example, if, if one startup event is focused on a specific phases, for example, from, from zero to two, this is how it works. But yeah, also, just, also we also have the possibility to add decimals, like for example, this so you can see now how the 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 component works and communicates all right yeah okay yeah uh i hope this answers your question uh will yeah so basically we are that's the end result which we are approaching we haven't yet reached that level right now but we are going to reach that level where we are able to output uh, this, the, the startup development phases with uh, a certain level of probability or confidence level. Yeah. So uh, we are getting more questions like, uh, what are the requirements for, for the Data Hub project and how long does the project take? So, so basically the, the most important thing to, uh, to, to, to start implementing this this uh, this kind of data have project is that there is like initial commitment and um, basically uh, a true long term thinking about developing this solution uh, in the long in the long term. Uh, we are not looking at basically at deploying this kind of solutions for for short term perspective. So that's really important for us. And then uh, for for the setup. Data Hub setup. It mainly, it basically takes around three months. It's the 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 the, the time frame that is needed basically to first of all bring understanding and awareness uh, for all the stakeholders involved in in the in the project about the solution that we want to bring, and and getting the the, the right uh, fundamentals in in place, and start working immediately towards uh, the startup uh, towards the data modeling side. Uh, to structure and standardize information, and and then uh, then after that is more about again it's more like uh, setting up the data hub and and ramp up and and accelerate and and hand over to local actors, so that local actors can get full freedom basically and and independence and ownership to to develop based on their own resources and based on uh, trustful partners and so forth. And 
Yeah, I think that that people are also asking about uh, contact details. So feel free to basically to contact us here. I'm putting the information uh, in the chat. Um, yeah. So feel free to, to reach out to, to us with any questions, with any technical aspects, and with, I would say, uh, any, any, any ideas or any thoughts about how to implement this solution in your local ecosystem. All right. Uh, if we have enough time also for one question more, if we have our own use case in mind, can you help us to implement that? Uh, definitely. So we, we are more than happy to, to support uh, other use cases that, that uh, may come directly from your own needs or, or priorities. So we just need basically to, to size that use case first. And based on that, we, when we then propose like a, a solution for, for that with related costs uh, for, for implementation. Good. Yes, so I think that uh, we don't have more questions and actually we are now uh, reaching the 60 minutes that we basically initially scheduled the, the webinar. So I think it's now time to, to conclude here the, the, the webinar. So thanks so much everyone for, for coming, for attending. Thanks a lot for all your questions. And, um, and of course, thanks to Gabi and Konstantinos for joining us today to explain more from, from a technical perspective what we are developing uh, in, in the company to bring more automation and intelligence for ecosystem developments. So we will uh, are going, we are going to prepare more webinars like this with other use cases. So stay tuned. And meanwhile, feel free to reach out through our different channels that we have in our websites and also directly uh, through my email that already uh, dropped there. So thanks a lot. Bye-bye and see you soon. Bye, Bye. everyone.